In this video, I'm going to do the best I can to explain how interior load-bearing walls basically function and uh, what their requirements are for a regular conventional concrete slab. Now, this would not include post-tension slabs. That's a totally different design. Uh, what you're looking at here is a footing, and you can see that um, it's kind of got a shape and design to it and uh, further along in the video you'll basically see that these footings here help support the floor and the walls above and also the stairway. But you're not going to see these after the concrete is poured and a lot of times this is where a lot of homeowners and do-it-yourselfers get a little ahead of the game here because they don't know what's underneath and uh, if you're trying to figure out whether or not you have a load bearing wall you're not going to be able to you know what are you going to do jackhammer the concrete up okay there's a foundation there so um, this realistically again I'm just kind of trying to give you some basics of um, what would be general building practices um, for an interior load bearing wall um, even though this like I said wouldn't help you figure out whether or not you have a load bearing wall most of the time. Now let's take a look at after the building is framed and you can see here that this particular wall is an interior load bearing wall and it will be holding up part of the stairs and a, a, a planter above like a little pot shelf. This wall here will also be um, supporting some of the floor and if you remember there was a foundation underneath these walls um, that's kind of what I was pointing to and you can always go back and um, check out the video again to get a better idea of what I'm talking about and of course here is another load bearing wall except for this particular wall even though it's got a footing underneath it all it's going to be supporting is part of the stairs and uh, realistically it's kind of hard to imagine why this footing was even in there but um, that's the engineering part of it that I'm not going to say that I don't understand a hundred percent but um, sometimes you're going to be building something that really doesn't make any sense to have an interior um, load-bearing wall that realistically isn't supporting very much weight and you see that often around stairwells but uh, for the most part you're not going to see it throughout the rest of a home because most of the walls are going to be supporting weight um, you know they're going to be supporting either floors ceilings or roofs now let's take a look at the stairway and uh, kind of give you a better idea now this you can see right here is even though the load bearing wall doesn't go all the way under these uh, two stair stringers um, it is supporting uh, an area above where the floor sits um, so the wall that these two stair stringers are basically attached to is supporting um, part of the floor above and um, since it's a two-story home it's also going to be helping to support the wall above the floor and part of the ceiling and maybe even part of the roof so I can understand why this particular um, or section of the um, load-bearing wall actually requires a footing however the center stairwell wall here really doesn't seem like it's supporting a lot and wouldn't require a footing so again this is kind of confusing uh, but again you are going to run into situations where a you're going to think why did they put a, a footing underneath there and again maybe we don't understand the engineering part of it so for the most part if you have a interior load bearing wall it is going to have a concrete footing underneath it um, it might even have anchor bolts attaching it to the footing attaching the base plates to the footing um, and it might even have uh, larger structural framing members posts um, headers um, things like that and of course these these bearing walls load bearing walls are always going to be supporting something structurally either a floor um, a ceiling or a roof um, something um, you know and again those are the most common things but load-bearing walls do serve a function and if you do not 
Um, no, you can't tell whether the wall is load bearing or non bearing. Do not remove it. Don't even think about it. So I hope this video helps. If it does, hit me with a couple of thumbs up every once in a while and let me know 